I'm working in the sunlight because I noticed that the videos come out better when there's one light there. So here's what I just drew up. So now just cut it in half along that midsection for now. We're going to cut out the pattern. That middle line, line two to four, cut that out. Right down the middle. Now the back piece, you just cut it out around the dot. See? So here's the, you know, there's that line, there's this line. The front piece, however, be sure to leave that three centimeter margin on the top because we're going to need it when we fold this dart. The rest of it, though, you can just go ahead and cut along these lines. There, there, there. And here, just leave that there. We'll just leave that. Oh, no! I made a mistake and cut on the wrong line. I wasn't supposed to cut there. I was supposed to cut... This was fine. That, that's the shoulder line I was supposed to cut here. So I'll just tape it. As you can see, we're still not taking into consideration the seam allowances. We do that at the very end. See, now this is only to my waist. So to make a t-shirt, we're going to rotate this dart to the bottom, widen it, and then we'll add more to the pattern, making sure we take into account the width of the hips. Before we continue, I just wanted to show you what you would get if you just went ahead and took this pattern, added the seam allowances, and sewed it together. It's not something you would probably wear. It has no style. It's just the very basic bodice. This is the front dart right here, and then this is the waist dart in the front right here. The back has some darts too, I believe. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what are darts for? What is the use of them? Well, they are important, and as we go along, you'll start to see. They give your garment volume, because nobody's a straight board. Even really skinny people have some shape. So the darts are here to give the, give the garment some, some 3D-ness, if I'm explaining myself properly. So, for example, here we have a flat piece of paper. Now, when I fold the dart, you'll see that we'll get some volume here. This is how you do it. You fold one end to the back, fold this one to the back also, this line. And the reason we leave this extra on top is when we close the dart, it's going to eat up some of this fabric up here, or in this case, the paper. So we need to cut the pattern with a different shape so that we'll have enough fabric. So you just draw from the neckline to number 12. You just redraw that line. Once you cut fabric out of this pattern, you have to cut it with this shape so that when you close the fabric dart, you will have enough fabric to fit into the dart. But in this case, we want to rotate the dart down to the bottom. So how do we do that? So first, we just have to draw this line. See this middle dart from the waist dart? Draw that to meet this one. Just continue it so that it reaches point 13 there. That's all. Now close the dart again. same way you did before, and so now it's three-dimensional. We need to make it two-dimensional again for our pattern, because patterns are all two-dimensional. So what do we do? We cut along this mid-section, this mid-dart here. 
so that it flattens out again. And it will spread out the same amount that we've taken off here. So now that's two-dimensional again. That's a pattern. Now we put it on another piece of paper and continue. One last thing before we go in and continue drawing the pattern. Place them, you know, facing each other, the flat sides facing each other, and fold them, um, put the patterns together, you know, along this line is fine. And make sure that everything lines up. Now the side should line up because it was the same measurement when you drew the pattern. So that lines up good. And make sure that the shoulders are the same uh, size. Now notice also it's not, it's not flat one on top of the other. Let's see, But that's normal. That's no problem. So just line up this side. That's fine. Now forget about the side. And now line up the shoulders. And look, usually the front one will be a little bit bigger only because remember we did the neckline we freehanded that we just eyeballed it so usually you're not going to get it exactly right but it's best to make it very light curve doesn't matter that this is not exactly together that's done those are the rest of the same size that's all that matters now these have to be the same size so we'll line it up on the armhole side first just up to here and then make a little dot where the front is bigger and redraw, redraw the neckline now so that it be so that the shoulders will match and again this isn't even your final neckline because you may want a really deep neckline that's what you're going to decide later on but since we're just making a basic t-shirt Usually the necklines are not that deep. So there you go. So there's your new neckline. And that will now match the other pattern's shoulder.
So you see the back is just the normal shape and the front is this funny looking shape. Zigzag stitch along the borders of all your pieces. This will prevent it from fraying. Okay, there we go. So I've got the front piece opened up. And here's the back piece, which you probably are able to recognize. So, now as you can see, this armhole, or rather this shoulder, let me take this out of the way, is much larger because we expanded it when we cut the fabric. So, and the back piece is much smaller. So what do we do? Well, this is the way I do it. Just thread a needle with some thread and just baste it, baste the shoulder. This is called basting. You're just going in and out all the way across. And we've got a knot on one end. So now, so that the front piece matches the back piece, you ruffle it so that it's the correct size. And try to spread out the ruffles so that they're evenly, evenly distributed. Now go ahead and sew that shoulder seam. And now I'll go ahead and do the same on the other shoulder. Okay, so I've done the two shoulders, and now I just have to sew off the sides, of course, right sides together. And in my case, it's optional, of course, but I'm going to put these ties in the sides of the blouse so I can tie my blouse in the back. But so far, we have this. And at this point, you can do whatever you want. You can, if you're going to leave it hanging low like this, obviously you probably have to wear something underneath. But I'm going to make it so that I don't have to wear something underneath. But you'll find that at this point you're going to feel like getting creative on your own. Some of you will feel like doing something like this or, you know, just do what, you're, what you feel like doing. But this is what I'm going to do. I take another threaded needle and starting up here at the shoulder seam in the neckline. Now, I wouldn't do this while I'm wearing it. <laughs> It's easier to do it when it's off you, but see, I would just feed the needle through the neckline. Uh, just the same way we did the shoulders to ruffle them, so I'm going to do that with the neckline. Okay. There, I fed the thread through, so now I just put it wherever I want. You don't have to make it really high, a little more full, you know, I don't want it that high. Go down a little, and again, just I just play around with it until it falls exactly the way I want it to. Here's another one I'm working on. In this case, I basted longer stitches into the neckline, so there would be a different type of drape. And what the easiest way to do that basting into the neckline is to go ahead and put it in, and keep the needle. So you have the knot on one end, and you have the needle on this end with the thread attached. So just pull this one and the neckline will move to the level you want it to. Once it's at the level you want to, just hold that with a finger or something and go ahead and stitch in a knot on this end. So then you can cut off the excess and then you have something to play with. See, this is still moving, but it's, it's got the neckline at the level you want it to. Then just go ahead and in front of the mirror or if you have a dress form, that's even better, organize the drapes you want them to and put them in place with pins. Then you can go ahead to the sewing machine and finish making it permanent, maybe with a zigzag stitch along the neckline. And then you just have to finish embellishing the hems. You know, maybe you could put a pretty ribbon over the edge of the neckline and the rest of the hems or fold them over or whatever you'd like. So have fun with this and thanks for watching.